Hi guys, Alex here. Today I'm going to talk about rentbacks. Hey guys, Alex McIver here with Dunnigan Realtors in Sacramento, California. Today I'm going to talk about rentbacks in my Real Estate Basics series. Uh, which is just to give you an overview of different real estate terms that we talk about and dive a little bit deeper into them. So first things first, what is a rent back? Uh, a rent back is exactly what it sounds like. It's when a buyer purchases a home and then the seller is going to stay in possession after the home has already closed. And that can be for a few days, a few months. It could even be a couple years. Uh, so it really varies, but really all it is is just saying that, hey, for a certain amount of time after ownership has switched, the seller is going to remain in possession. This situation comes up for a number of different reasons. A very common one is just that the seller may need the extra time to line up getting their funds to purchase on the replacement home, uh, or maybe they're moving somewhere and it's just not gonna quite line up uh, exactly. So they might need a few more days, a few more weeks, uh, whatever that is to then be ready to move out. So how long can a rent back be? Well, a rent back could really be as long as you want it, uh, although there are some caveats. So in functional terms, most, if you're purchasing for a primary residence, you wanna live in that house, you obviously don't wanna have them living there indefinitely. Uh, and a common time frame would be 29 days or less. Uh, and there's a reason for that. So at 29 days, and this is talking about in regards to California, uh, but in 29 days or fewer, uh, you will be doing what's called an SIP, a seller in possession form. Uh, and that is a license to stay there as opposed to a lease which sounds like a subtle difference, but there's actually some bigger implications because as a lease, that is more akin to a, say renting a motel or a hotel or something like that, where you don't, you don't have tenant rights. Uh, so that if you overstay your welcome, uh, they'll be able to get you out more quickly. Once you're at the 30 day mark, then we have to issue what's called an RLAS, a rental lease after sale. Uh, and then that is going to be a lease. So then the person, the seller that's staying there is going to have tenant rights. So if they do decide to stop paying or not leave when they're supposed to, you would have to evict them. And that can be much more of a cumbersome uh, process, especially out here in California. And with the eviction moratorium on, it's been pretty dicey. Uh, luckily, we don't see it too often that sellers just straight up refuse to move uh, after they're supposed to, but it is a situation that can happen, so you should be aware of it. Another thing to consider when talking about how long you can do a rent back, most primary residence loans uh, are going to require you to take possession after 60 days. So they're not going to like it if you are trying to issue a rent back for say six months or a year. Uh, so you want to be careful uh, in reality, it's probably gonna to be tough for them. The bank isn't typically sending people around to go check to make sure that you are living there, but just know you are gonna be running afoul of what they're supposed to be doing. So you might be risking your financing, which I wouldn't recommend. So if you are doing a primary residence loan, you need to occupy within 60 days. Typically check with your lender though, they'll be able to advise you further. So what does a rent back cost? Well, really, you can charge as much or as little as you guys agree upon. In actuality, some of the more common ways of doing it uh, are you either typically offer what's called PITI, which is the buyer's cost. So it's principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Uh, so then you will say, okay, you know, with all of these added up, this is how much it cost me. Uh, and basically, it then becomes a wash for the buyer. Uh, another one is just to do it free and say, okay, you know, seller, you can stay there for two weeks at no cost. That's kind of the, you know, the added perk that you're trying to make your offer more attractive. Uh, and typically you'll have the seller pay for utilities, but it depends sometimes with things switching over, you may want to say, okay, well, we'll pay water for the one week or two weeks that you're there just because that 
here in Sacramento automatically transfers. So it just becomes a little easier that way. But if you wanted, you could charge, you know, $100,000 a day if that's something that you guys agreed upon. Uh, likely they are not going to agree to it. Uh, so, you know, usually staying within the, the realm of this is a, a transaction where everyone's trying to make things work, uh, you'll likely just either want to do PITI or free or, you know, something reasonable in that range. What happens if the seller won't leave after the rent back is up? This is a common and valid concern. Thankfully, it doesn't happen all that often, but it can happen, so it is something to be aware of. I know I mentioned this earlier, but I'll dive into it just a little bit more here. If your original agreement was for 29 days or fewer uh, and you have an SIP, it's a little bit easier to get them out because you only have a license, or I should say the seller only has a license to be there. Uh, you will want to consult a real estate attorney and you will want to potentially get law enforcement involved. Uh, you should have a security deposit that you can then kind of use to have some sort of leverage to say, hey, by you staying over, I'm incurring these extra costs. I'm going to need to take it out of the security deposit. And hopefully that's enough of a cudgel to kind of prod them along and get them out of the house. Uh, and that's kind of the first step. And then you might want to talk to a real estate lawyer uh, and then potentially get law enforcement involved. If you have a lease, so 30 days or longer, uh, you will kind of go through that same process, try and work with them to get them out, probably talk with your agents, use them to kind of facilitate that a little bit. Uh, and if you can't come to any agreement, even with you know threatening to take the security deposit, uh, then you will need to then get uh, an attorney involved, likely go through the eviction process, uh, which can be time consuming, and then likely have to get uh, law enforcement involved to get them out to actually perform the eviction. Uh, usually you will kind of come to terms before that, uh, or maybe they'll just stay for a few extra days and then you know, you'll know you kind of get them out, but uh, it can happen, so you do want to be aware. All right, so that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please just drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give it a like and subscribe. It's very helpful to me. Uh, and feel free to reach out if you have any real estate questions or concerns or needs. I'm always here to help. Thanks so much.